Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to First Baptist Church's Grand Cayman's Daily Devotional here on Friday, the 1st of May. But wherever you're tuning in and whenever you're tuning in, we're delighted you're joining us for our considerations in the book of Proverbs. We started last month halfway through the book, so on the first of the month, we're returning to the beginning of the book and starting over at chapter one. I don't know if you recall that that uh, runaway bestseller, about 30 million copies of Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, first published in 1936, has helped spawn a whole generation and more of self-help books. If you need help physically, mentally, financially, medically, domestically, spiritually, there's bound to be a self-help book for you somewhere. A whole generation have been brought up on how to do this for yourself and how to do that. A sort of unimaginable amount of books and helps and aids and videos, etc., available to help us to improve ourselves. Well, we're living in an information overload age and of that there is no doubt at all. Somebody said that if you spend all your time on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Facebook, and I know I keep away from a lot of those things because usually my emails are just rammed full anyway, but if you stay with YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, eventually you get an award. You're called You Twit Face. <laughs> well, it's meant to be humorous, so no offense meant if you spend a lot of time on all those things. But there's one piece of knowledge that we cannot get too much of. One piece of knowledge that will never overload us. And it's here in verse seven. It is the key to life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Why is the fear of the Lord the beginning of knowledge? Well, because this is the living God in the beginning God, when there was nothing out of nothing, he created everything. God plus the world equals the world. The world minus God equals nothing at all. And that's why we're here, because of a God who in love created us. And the God who created us, the covenant name of God here, Yahweh, means the great I am, the one who's God alone, supreme, preeminent, the cre uncreated creator, a, a word that's so overworked in today's culture that it's become almost meaningless. Somebody has a nice ice cream. What was that like? Awesome. Well, with all due respects, the only one who's truly awesome is our creator, redeemer, and friend. And we're invited here to fear this God in this context, what does fear him mean? Well, I've had a whole raft of interesting students in my about a quarter of a century teaching in a seminary. And one of them, Michael, was a, had been a young rabbinical student when he came to faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Messiah. And every so often in the middle of a lecture, he would throw in a little vignette or something. And I don't know what I was lecturing on, but his hand went up and he said, Steve, um, could I say that reminds me of the rabbinical concept of, and then he quoted a phrase I'd never heard in my life before nor since. I said, pardon? And so he repeated the phrase. It reminds me of the rabbinical concept of the dot, dot, dot. So um, I said, well, Michael, you know, just, just for the benefit of the class, me as well, perhaps you'd like to explain what you're talking about, which he then did. He said, this concept is simply the fear of God. So when you go to synagogue and when you leave, here's the key. Know before whom you stand. In other words, if you stand before the almighty God, you know you are not the be all and end all. You're actually very small. However, you matter and you were 
You were meant to be here. You were meant to be here. I was meant to be here at such a time as this. You weren't a freak. You weren't an accident. You may not have been planned and designed by any human hand, but God intended you to be here. And the fear of the Lord starts with knowing that I stand before this almighty God. I stand in his presence. That gives me a due sense of humility, but also an invitation to get to know him, to love him, and to serve him, and for others to love them with the love with which I am loved of God. C.S. Lewis said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I can see it, but because by it I can see everything else. In the knowledge of God, we not only see our God, but by him and through him, we begin to see everything else as well. God grant us to walk in the fear of our God today. Amen.